the unevangelized, and the unreached. We have a strat strategic plan called the Pulse Plan, which is a crucial measure of the heart rate. Tracking its changes helps monitor a person's health. So it is with our Pulse Plan that we hope to measure our efforts and health of our church and community with five strategic goals. Praise, utilization, leadership, stewardship, and in empowerment. And in this month of May, we focus on empowerment as we create a ministry that will enlighten, enlarge, encourage, and energize disciples and neighbors on methods to challenge unfairness, racial discrimination, economic inequality in the community based on biblical principles. Amen. And as you remain on your feet, let us stay together our church covenant. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to give it a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly uh, to the, as God has prospered us, towards its expenses, for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit, and if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, and to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys and with tender sympathy bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy to be slow to take or give offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of our Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew to secure it without delay. And through life, amid evil report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God who hath called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. And you may be seated. The Lord is our shepherd. We are the sheep of Christ's pasture. The shepherd makes us lie down in green pastures. In Christ, we dwell secure. The shepherd leads us beside still waters and restores our souls. We worship Christ, our shepherd, our gate. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for another week's journey, another opportunity to lift you up, to praise you, to celebrate your presence in our life. We pray that those who are assembled here and those who are with us through cell phones and iPads and computers will feel your presence, for we need you today to come and be with us and dwell in us that we may experience your power, your love, your joy, and your peace. Come now through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen.
Praise the Lord and good morning, Mount Moriah. Wherever you are at home, right here in the sanctuary with us, please rise on your feet or even just sing in your seats. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Where you are, you ought to say hallelujah to that. God sent his son. They called. holy name i pray that you have come to worship god today simple song that we know it simply says god here we are to worship here we are to bow down and to say that you are god despite everything going on you are still in control and to that we honor him light of the world you stepped out into darkness oh you 
it says, I, I'll never just say hallelujah and thank you Lord bless his name because he's a good God and he is the one that is the same yesterday today and forevermore we say thank you Lord amen 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 good morning all by any means necessary we are appreciated the Mount Moriah family as well as our guests and our visitors, we welcome into welcome you into our home. Now, at this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's bow our heads in a moment of concentration. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, most heavenly Father, as humbly as we know how. Father, we come to lift your name to the heavens, most holy Father to give you all the praise and the glory, most holy Father, because you are most worthy of thee. Most holy Father, we come this morning to lift you and surround you, most holy Father, with our earthly support, most holy Father, that all we do be pleasing in your eyes, most holy Father. Father, we ask of you, most holy Father, to come down and join us, most holy Father. We know that you're already here, Father, but we invite you into our, our homes. We invite you into this church here on Capitol Hill, Mount Moriah, most holy Father. We invite you into our hearts and our souls, most holy Father, because if there's a time of need, most holy Father, this is the time that we need you, most holy Father. We trust in you, most holy Father. Father, we ask, most holy Father, that for prayer for those that are sick, the shut in, most holy Father. There are plenty of those, most holy Father. We ask for prayer for the essential personnel, most holy Father, the first responders, all those, most holy Father, that have rejoined the fight against the pandemic that we are having, most holy Father. But most holy Father, we come to offer our services, most holy Father, corporate prayer wherever we are, most holy Father, because we shall pray, most holy Father, to ask upon you because we know that you are giving most pleasantly, most holy Father, and forgiving, most holy Father. You have gave your only begotten Son for us, most holy Father. So we come before you in petitioning, most holy Father, that you go into the hospitals, most holy Father. You go into the homes, most holy Father, where are those that have been shut in. Let them not feel alone, most holy Father. Let them feel the comfort of your warmth and your love, most holy Father. Most Holy Father, we thank you for the communication network that you have, have given us in technology that we are able to reach out to you, Most Holy Father, to join you, Most Holy Father, to hear our prayers, Most Holy Father. Father, we come to you as well, Most Holy Father, that keep our pastor, Most Holy Father. Give him the strength, Most Holy Father, to deliver your word on this first Sunday, Most Holy Father, because there's words that we need, most holy Father, for food for thought, most holy Father. Food for spirit, most holy Father. May we be receiving these things, most holy Father, wherever we are at this time. Let us not feel alone, most holy Father, because you are always with us. This we ask in your heavenly son's name, Jesus the Christ's name, amen. 
the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen again. We thank God and we praise God for worship on today and we thank God for you participating in worship wherever you are. You might be in your cars, you may be in your living rooms, your dining rooms, or even in your bedrooms, Um, but we thank God for you participating in worship on today for God is is worthy of our praise. Pray that everybody is doing well wherever you are and we are praying that God will continue uh, to heal you and perform miracles in your life. Please pay particular attention to uh, the announcements as uh, printed in our May bulletin. You should have that in your email. If not, you can go on our website and you can find it there. Uh, Just a few uh, announcements this morning at 9.30 a.m. Please join us for church school. You can join on our uh, Zoom. You should have the link there as well as you can join on Facebook as well. Uh, Children's Church at 10 a.m. You can visit our YouTube channel uh, at MMBC Online Youth Church via Zoom at 12 noon. Amen. Our uh, youth should have a link to that. And also, let us not forget how we can uh, pay our tithes and offerings. You can do so through PayPal. You can do so through Givelify, the Cash App. You can do so through bill pay through your bank. And you can also mail it to the church, Mount Moriah Baptist Church, 1636 East Capitol Street, Northeast. Uh, This morning, uh, when I went upstairs and and placed your envelopes in, in the safe, I noticed that one of our disciples had just taken... Uh, his or her offering envelope sealed it up and put a stamp on it. Well, it made sense to me um, because the address is on the envelope. Amen. So if that's what you want to do, if you just want to stick, amen, a stamp on your offering envelope that already has the address, you can you can send it to us. Let us not forget we have team with we'll Serve the City, D.C., it is a nonprofit organization in which we are in partnership with them collecting um, canned foods and other non-perishables as well as frozen food uh, so that we can help uh, to supply those who are the most vulnerable during this time with food and other uh, items that they might need. If you want to participate while you're dropping off your offerings, you can drop off food as well uh, to help us in, in this endeavor. We'll serve your city, D.C. You can drop off today from 9.30 to 11 on tomorrow from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And then on Tuesday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And also uh, for Serve the City on Wednesday Uh, from 11 to 3, so hopefully and prayerfully you are getting all of that information. Let us continue to pray for one another. Amen, that God will continue uh, to keep us safe during this um, pandemic. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds now for the lifting of our morning offering. The Bible says that God does love a cheerful giver. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you and we do praise you for this opportunity to come 
and to give unto you what is already yours. Bless us as we give on today, and we pray that our gifts be pleasing in your sight. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks. Amen. While you are in your homes, you can uh, go to uh, the internet, whatever device you have, and you can at this time pay through PayPal, Givelify, the Cash App, or if you uh, want to, you can write a check uh, to Mount Moriah Baptist Church, or you can pay through your bank, and you can drop off also on today from 9.30 to 11, Monday from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., Tuesday from 4 to 6 p.m. So as you are uh, doing that, we pray that you will be cheerful in your giving. Again, as you are writing your checks, as you are online, uh, please do so at this time. song that we all know let's sing it together you can't be God's giving hallelujah sing that wherever we are we know it let's sing it together God is even blessing us right now we can sing this stand for our doxology.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you for who you are, for what you are doing in our lives even right now. We proclaim that we need you and we need your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Wherever we are, we ask and pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive your word on this morning. Come, Holy Spirit, and have thine own way. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks. Let the people of God say, Amen. Please stand wherever you are for the reading of God's word. is taken from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Acts chapter 3. Verses 1 through 10 from the New International Version, the text reads this way. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man crippled from birth was carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. I want to use as a subject this morning the impact of faith. The impact of faith. A man involved in a shipwreck out on the ocean, found himself adrift, floating in the sea and clinging to a piece of wood or wreckage for his dear life. His fate uncertain, his eyes closed, and he prays that God will save him. There on his shoddy raft, the man visualizes all the glorious ways God might intervene. He could send a flock of birds to miraculously lift his tired body out of the water and carry him to the nearest shore. Perhaps God would send a golden chariot pulled across the sky by winged horses. He did not know what miracle God would bestow upon him, but he knew that God had promised that one's need one needs only the faith to move a mountain for God to do it for them. And this man had such faith. After spending some amount of time adrift, 
At long last, a small boat pulls alongside him. They toss him a life preserver, urging him to grab onto it so that they could pull him to safety. But the man's faith would not be deterred. God had a miracle in store for him, and this small piece of man-made inflatable rubber was no miracle. As tempting as it was to grab the life preserver, the man was sure it was a test of his faith in God's miracles. He declined, saying loudly, Fear not, God will come through, you will see. Eventually the boat moves on as there were other shipwreck su survivors to rescue. As they left, a tiny tinge of fear came over the floating but faithful man. But he pushed it down and reminded himself that God was proud of his unwavering faith. And the miracle in store was worth the risk. The rescue boat returned multiple times, but each time the man dutifully declined, certain that God would reward him for his prayer and faithfulness. As the hours passed, the man continued to pray. Suddenly, a light shone down on him from above, and the wind began shipping the waves around him. Had his miracle arrived? After a moment, it became clear that this was not God's work. The light was from a rescue helicopter. A ladder tossed out from the cabin of the helicopter was dropped right next to God's faithful servant. The man smiled, looked skywardly, and as loud as he could, yelled toward the well-meaning rescuers. I'll wait for God's intervention. Go rescue the less faithful if you can. God will come through. But everyone else from the shipwreck had already been rescued either by boat or helicopter. This faithful man was the only one who remained, they explained to him. This information seemed to bring renewal and renewed excitement to the floating man of God. Again smiling, more certain than ever, he assured them that what God had in store must be glorious. While others had chosen to trust in man, he had chosen to trust in God. And when others saw his reward, it would bring them faith as well. How honored he felt to be used as a miracle for the expansion of God's kingdom. It was thus quite a surprise to the man that he was promptly devoured by sharks in the infested area of the ocean where he had piously remained adrift. Upon entering the afterlife, he quickly made his way to where people in heaven speak directly to God, which we will assume is some sort of large house with a walkway made of gold bricks leading to his entrance. He fell to his knees upon being in the presence of the Lord, thanking God for allowing him into his kingdom. But he did have a question about his demise. Why, Lord, why didn't you rescue me? I was faithful. I believed your miracles would save me. Why was my faith unrewarded? Why didn't you come through for me? God's booming voice came down on the man, and God said, Verily, I sent you a boat no less than three times, and sent you a helicopter with a ladder. What part of rescuing you were you not comprehending? The point of the story is that God does bring the faithful to safety. God may not bring us as the faithful to safety the way in which we would like God to do so. But God does bring the faithful to safety. God does answer our prayers, but not in the ways we always wish. In our text of preachment today, we see the faithfulness of Jesus' apostles, Peter and John. They in our text were portrayed or are portrayed as devout Jews going to the temple daily for prayers. We all know that prayer always introduces the occasion of a miracle to come. 
If you want a miracle in your life, and during this time, all of us are in need of some, you pray. Faith tells us and teaches us that prayer is always the occasion for a miracle to come. Faith says a miracle is coming my way. Peter and John were going up to the highest height in Jerusalem. They were going to the temple for afternoon prayer. This was the time when all devout Jews would pause to pray or go to the temple to pray. There was a crippled man from birth, crippled from his mother's womb. This crippled man, crippled from his mother's womb, was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful. He was put there every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. This at first appeared to be a hopeless situation, but the word beautiful alludes us to the fact that something miraculous is about to happen. Josephus reminds us that this beautiful gate is not mentioned in Jewish descriptions of the Jerusalem temple and its gates. We know of the Shishan gate, the Nicanor gate, also called the Corinthian or the bronze gate according to Josephus, but nothing known of this beautiful gate. Some scholars believe that it is called the beautiful gate because of what was going to happen to this crippled man in the name of Jesus. Many believe that it was, a, a, it was called blue beautiful because it symbolized a change that was about to come in this crippled man's life. I want to suggest to you that faith does the same. Faith does what we call the beautiful. Faith in Christ symbolizes a change is about to come in our lives. What type of impact does faith have upon your life? First, faith moves you and I from brokenness to repair. This crippled man from birth was put there daily by those going into the temple court to beg from those who also were entering the temple court. To beg, this crippled man from birth asks for help daily to the entrance of the gate called Beautiful. This was his sole source of livelihood. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. This was this beggar's usual policy. Beggars were found outside the temple at 3 o'clock p.m. in the afternoon because for some reason or another, those who were headed for the evening prayers were the most likely to give donations to the poor. This man who had been crippled since birth and who was put at the entrance of the gate called Beautiful Every Day, did not recognize anything special about James and John. They were just usual temple visitors. So he asked Peter and John for money. Peter and John together looked intently at this man right straight in his eyes. Peter said to him, look at us. Peter called for the attention of this beggar, who was accustomed to being turned down or neglected. Peter wanted to make this meeting, this miracle, something personal for the beggar. The beggar gave his attention expecting something from them. His obedience to Peter's demand was part of his business savvy. He wanted money from them. This beggar would get something from them, but it will be something far different than what he expected. The beggar became attentive. Peter said to him, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth walk. Remember now, Peter and John were part of this community that had everything in common. They sold their possessions and goods and they gave to anyone who was in need. So Peter and John did not have silver nor gold. What they had monetarily was now the shared property of the community of believers. Not having silver or gold must have been disappointing to the beggar. But the invoking of in Jesus' name lets us know that something is about to happen simply because there is power in the name of Jesus. Invoking the name of Jesus places Jesus' power and authority into operation. Peter saw this man as a broken individual who was in need of repair. This is the predicament of each and every one of us 
who are watching and listening to this sermon on today. We are broken individuals who are in need of repair. And our faith tells us that the only one who can repair us is this Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There has always been and will always be this relationship between Christian faith and disease. The first works of the Holy Spirit in the Christian church was the healing of the sick. This battle with sickness and disease exempts no one. If we live long enough, we will get sick and we will have to fight disease. Some people have been dealing with them all of their lives, chronic ailments, handicaps that are permanent along with disabilities. There are at least three types of views when it comes to the Christian and disease. The first view says that religion plays the ultimate part in disease. God is good, that disease is bad. Therefore, God cannot make and did not make disease. Disease has no legitimate part in God's universe and therefore is not reality. Man makes disease with his impure and imperfect thinking. This view says that the doctors have no place at all for disease and that disease can only be fought with spiritual weapons. The second view is that there are the extreme. This view believes that religion plays no part in the battle against disease. The Christian may pray, but religion plays no direct part in the battle against disease. The third view we see clearly in the New Testament and in the book of Acts. This includes the acts of Jesus. Jesus, without dispute, made people well. We see Jesus performing miracles in the New Testament. Jesus healed persons before he made them whole. In other words, Jesus healed them and they followed Jesus. During Jesus' time on earth, he did heal the sick. I just wanted you to think about these three views about Christianity and disease. Let me share with you what my Christian faith tells me about disease. Faith in Christ plays the ultimate role in one's battle against disease. Yes, God is good. Diseases such as the coronavirus is bad. Disease is the result of the sins of humanity. Doctors do have a place in disease. When sick, my faith tells me that I do need to pray. Along with my prayers, I do want a doctor because I believe that God works through doctors. However, my faith also tells me that Jesus Christ performs the miracles. He can heal disease. Sometimes he does and sometimes he does not. God can choose because God is sovereign. However, God never gives us more than we can bear. My faith also tells me that just as Jesus healed of disease in the Bible, he is still healing of disease on today. We are all broken people who are in need of repair. This body does break down and will break down. Pain is a reality. Disease is a reality. Coronavirus is a reality. Therefore, my faith tells me that the only one who can heal is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the only one who can mend, the only one who can repair. He's the only one who can make well, the only one who can bring back to health. He's the only one who can restore and rebuild. He's the only one who can bring us back to health. And he is the only one who can strengthen and the only one who can revive. You can put your faith in the infectious disease doctors. I'm going to put my faith in this Jesus of Nazareth. You can put your faith in vaccinations. I'm going to put my faith in Jesus. You can put your faith in antibodies, medicine, and medical theory all you want. I'm going to put my faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't get me wrong, I believe in doctors, I believe in medicine, I believe that we need a cure for this coronavirus, but these things don't run independent of Jesus. Jesus supersedes them all. Jesus uses the doctors, he uses the medicine, he uses the technology. Give me this Jesus of Nazareth. My faith tells me that he's still in the healing business. He's still repairing broken people. He still has the cure for every disease and every sickness. Oh, we need is this Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Secondly, faith moves you and I from paralysis to joyful activity. 
Peter said to this crippled man, silver or gold I do not have. But what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth walk. Peter takes him by the right hand, helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. They were strengthened not by Peter and John, but by God. The reality that healing has happened is confirmed. The right hand that has been stretched out in expectation of someone giving him something to survive on was the same right hand he extended to help him up, to help him feel the sensation in his legs. They gave him the confidence to do something he had never done before, and that was walk. This miracle takes place immediately. This is exactly, this is exactly what faith does. Faith moves us from paralysis to joyful activity. Paralysis is anything that keeps you from moving, anything that renders you unable to think or act normally, anything that causes fear or panic, that disables you or immobilizes you, anything that brings you to a standstill that cripples you or freezes you or stops you, anything that petrifies you or transfix you, which includes the pandemic that we are facing today. Some people right now are paralyzed by the fear of this virus and rightfully so. Fearful to go out of the house to the grocery store, the fear of contracting the disease, of loved ones getting and dying from the disease, of not wearing a mask and those who are not doing the same. All of us are fearful and facing anxiety on today. But this Jesus of Nazareth, is able to move us from paralysis to joyful activity. He's able to do the, the impossible. He's able to perform miracles. He's able to make the sick well. He's able to make the mute talk, the lame walk, the deaf hear, and the blind see. He's able to cure those of the coronavirus. He's able to make persons, to take persons off of ventilators. He's able to reactivate, to make alive. He's able to reassure. He's able to calm and comfort and soothe and to please. He's able to restore joy and happiness. I'm crazy enough to believe that it won't be long now before we will be able to go back to our interests, to go back to work, to enjoy our pastimes, to engage in our leisure interests, to indulge in our habits, to be back at the hustle and bustle of what we call the DMV. This Jesus Christ of Nazareth is able to cure us instantly, immediately, in the blink of an eye. Faith in this Jesus of Nazareth helps us up immediately. Faith in this Jesus of Nazareth enables us to walk when we could not previously do so. Your faith in this Jesus Christ of Nazareth restores the joy of your salvation. Thirdly, your faith in this Jesus Christ of Nazareth turns your situation from begging to praising God. I won't stay here long. This man who had been crippled all of his life can now walk. He did something else he had never done before. He went with Peter and John into the temple course to pray. For the first time in his life, he was able to walk into the temple to pray. He went into the temple walking and jumping and praising God. This Jesus of Nazareth moved him from begging to praising God. You see, when this Jesus of Nazareth performs a miracle in our lives, praise should be our first action. Nobody did it but Jesus. All honor and glory and majesty and dominion belongs to God. It was this Jesus of Nazareth who performed the miracle. It was not the doctors nor the medicine, not even ourselves. It was God. So we praise God and we honor God. We adore God and we exalt God for what God has done in our lives. Praise be to God for the miracles that God has performed, is performing right now, and will perform in the future. Glory be to our God. Lastly, our faith not only impacts you, but our faith impacts everyone. When the people inside the temple saw this man walking, jumping, and praising God, they recognized him immediately. They recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. 
Listen to what Luke the writer says next. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. This miracle not only impacted the beggar, but also those who lived in the city who had come to worship on that day. You see, your miracle is not just for you. Your miracle not only impacts you, but your miracle impacts everyone else. Your miracle is also for someone else. That's why you can't keep your miracle to yourself. You have to go and share it with others. Your miracle impacts all those who come into contact with you and comes into contact with those who know those who know you. The world must be able to point to signs of healing power at work in our midst on today. There must be some evidence for the world to see. Yes, this Jesus of Nazareth healed you. What a tremendous impact upon your life. But the impact does not stop here. Your miracle must be made known so that the world can be impacted. To give evidence to the world that this Jesus of Nazareth is still performing miracles on today. Just think about it. I'm done. The stories that we see during this pandemic are the stories of those who have successfully fought the virus. We love those stories of nurses and doctors and other healthcare professionals lined up in the hallways on the right and the left cheering patients on as they leave the hospital clapping their hands and cheering because this person has beat the coronavirus. In an era of so much bad news, so many people dying, we love the stories of the sick going home, thus defeating the virus that has taken place in the lives of so many. Miracles such as these encourage us, they strengthen us, they give us hope, they give us joy, they give us light. Miracles not only impact us, but they also impact others. Your miracle is the visible evidence of the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Your miracle is the visible manifestation that this Jesus Christ of Nazareth is in our world today. Your miracle is a witness to the fact that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is Lord and Savior of the world. I'm like the songwriter who says, I know the Lord will make a way. He will make a way for me and for you. He will open doors that I'm not able to. I know the Lord will make a way. I have a Savior who I can tell all my troubles to when I'm burdened and I don't know what to do. I go to God in secret prayer. I just leave all of my burdens there. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. When through the storms you're tossed about, I know the Lord, he will bring you out. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. May God go with you to the very end. I know that the Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. I know that the the Lord will make a way when I was sick and could get well. He healed my body. Now I can tell the Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I'm convinced of it. I know he will. I know he can. I've tried him for myself. He will open doors. There is no doubt in my mind. I know a God who can step in. He will make a way out of no way. And he is sticking there right on time. He's never failed me yet. He keeps on making a way. I believe it. I was see but I know that the Lord will make a way somehow yes he will yes he will yes he will amen amen and amen let us pray Lord we thank you and we praise you for your word on today we believe that you are still in the miracle working business we praise God for what God has done for what God is doing right now, and for what God will do for us in the future. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks that the people of God say amen. Please stand to your feet wherever you are. God's desire for all of us is that we be saved. The Bible says that we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus, and we believe in our hearts that God has risen from the grave, we shall be saved. Even though you are not in the sanctuary this morning, your 
salvation is very important to us. We want to make sure that we extend this plan of salvation to you. If you're looking for salvation, repeat these words after me. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner. I have sinned against you. I want forgiveness for all my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again. Father, I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. Come into my life. Save me. Heal me. Make me whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray that prayer. Your sins are forgiven. You pray that prayer. You're on this journey called salvation. Pray that prayer for the first time. We do encourage you to please call the church or send us an email with your information and let us know that you have made a decision of Christ. Or you can, at this time, you can text 31996, 31996. And in the texting section, you can type newbie, press send, you will receive a membership form. Once you receive that membership form, you can fill it out and you can send it back to us. Text 31996 newbie. Fill out the membership form after you press send. Fill it out. Send it back to us and someone will get in touch with you in the next day or so. If you have accepted Christ, please email us, please text us, please call us. We want to know about your decision today. We're happy that you are now a part of the family of God. And you send us your information. We will get back to you in the next day or so. Is there one? We offer Christ to you. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for Holy Communion. You can take Holy Communion in your home. You might have some crackers or, amen, some, some bread, amen. Some made their communion bread on last first Sunday. If you have some cranberry juice or some grape juice or as they used to do in the old church, you can use red wine as well. If you don't have those elements, you can use cookies or something to that extent or, amen, some other type of juice. I've seen that done in other parts of the world. It's not necessarily the elements, but it's what the elements represent. So we... As we serve communion in the sanctuary, we will give you the opportunity to pray, prepare those items if you have not already done so. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for communion. 
we thank you and we praise you for the forgiveness of sins. Forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings, not only against you, but against one another. We thank you for this time of communion and bless the elements that we are using in order to participate in communion on today. We look forward to that time in which we can come back into the sanctuary to participate in communion as the people of God. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks. Amen. As we serve in the sanctuary, I ask that you prepare your communion elements at this time. in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and said, this is my body that has been broken for you. As often as you do this, do in memory of me, eat ye all. Also in the like manner, he took of the cup, said, this is the blood of the new covenant, shared for remission of sins. As often as you do this, do in memory of me, drink ye all. The Bible says after they ate of the bread and drank of the cup, they went out singing in the Mount called Olives. We don't know what they sung, but we're going to keep on singing. Amen. Amen. Come on, Sister Tom, and lead us. Amen. As we leave, conclude this service, pray God's blessing upon you. Pray that you will do the things that are necessary in order to stay safe. Continue to place your faith in Jesus Christ. God bless you. Sing it one more time together.